Ladies and gentlemen, volume 10. You and Charlie Tuna from J5 were classmates who talked to me about Freestyle Fellowship. I'm, you know, big fan of the Baker Boys. I, I, I know you guys didn't really, you know, I guess you guys were bumping heads back back then while you were recording that song. Yeah. How did you hear about that? Kind of kicked them out of the fucking studio. I want to apologize to the Baker Boys. Ice Cube visited The Good Life. Saw you perform the song and then kind of switched okay. his style up. Is that true? Well, people don't want to hear, hey, your best, your favorite rapper has been influenced by some niggas that ain't got no paper. That fuck a gorilla line is that reference to Ice Cube. I hang with my dogs, man. A gorilla. Okay, so that, that, you didn't, I didn't expect you to say <laughs> that. <laughs> Let's take it, you know, back to the beginning. Back before this hip-hop shit started, I remember what it was like in the 80s and early 90s. I mean, it was really popping. I mean, talk to these kids. Right. Talk to these kids about what L.A. was like back then. Uh, I, the best thing that I could say was a war zone. Um, there was a lot, of, a lot of crack, a lot of killing. Uh, it was a lot of gangbanging. Um, it was more gangbanging than any time in the history of gangbanging, I would say. And uh, it was a real scary place to be raised in. Um, yeah, I uh, I ended up. You basically had to find uh, a group of fellas to fellowship with. And uh, hold on, I don't know what happened. And so yeah, uh, I got lucky and. You know, uh, you, you you couldn't really be in the city without having some affiliation with some group of gangbang uh, gangbangers. But I will tell you that you know, hip hop saved me and uh, gave all of us who came out of the culture of underground hip hop in L.A. Uh, kind of a shield. Uh, with the with the crack ep epidemic and the uh, game bang epidemic and yeah it saved my life um i would hate to think of where my life would have been without hip-hop you know uh sending me to in the right direction you know yeah uh, it was still rocky i mean hey the music game is rock and roll <laughs> so yeah it, talk, it was yeah. some it, it's some uh it wasn't the easiest life I that I chose, but I would not have chosen anything other than this. Yeah. Well, shit, let's take it back a little bit. You and Charlie Tuna from J5 were classmates or schoolmates, I guess. Uh, did he kind of kickstart your career a little bit? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, nah, man, but he was a heavy influence on me. Okay. Um, he was a definitely an influence on the lyrical side of it all. Um, I think, you know, mainly the guys that we were around at that time were what I would call acrobatic type rappers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was about, it was about the, uh, you know, the patterns and, you know, being able to do things um as with the with the with the form that other people couldn't do mm -hmm. um you know but with charles he was the first real deep rapper you know what i mean the, the, he was a, he's a thinker you know what i mean and that definitely rubbed off on me you know what i mean mm -hmm. and I, I i i i would like to say that i have styles and you know, I definitely like the acrobats of it all. Mm -hmm. um, I like to do things in between the bars that other people haven't done. Mm -hmm. But uh, I definitely want to give props to to uh, Tuna for making it a, a, a conscious thing for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
I don't even know if he knows that, but mm. there you go. That's dope, man. And that's why I do this show right here, so people can get props where they're due. Otherwise, the stuff gets you know swept under the rug, and, and nobody even knows that. Talk to me about the importance of Freestyle Fellowship and, and how you linked up with them. Well, the first thing I want to say is my, my microphone mic, man. You know, Mike and I, mm -hmm. who, you know, it would, we, you know, you talk about acrobatics, or I talk about, if we're talking about acrobatics, <laughs> he, uh, he has definitely done things that I didn't think was possible to do. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard him rap and it sound it sounded as if he was actually using more than one track <laughs> and he wasn't yeah you know what i mean so yeah i i i i, I you know when, when you say freestyle fellowships i mean they're all brilliant mcs man i, I give you that mm -hmm. but mike and microphone my yeah mike and nine it's definitely a standout and you know props to the whole group but yeah that cat right there is on another level that we all aspire to be on you know i i, I have to I, I have to give him his um you know one of the one of the uh style style well yeah well well uh, anywhere from see, the, other than the east west coast i mean go ahead though nah man not even that because they all know mm -hmm. everybody knows we all know who microphone mike is yeah. and i would say you know hey they know who volume 10 is too mm -hmm. and i feel like when you say when you say you know underrated i feel What's really saying is underpaid. Mm. That's okay. that's 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 how I feel. Uh -huh. I feel I feel the man is underpaid, mm. and uh, you know I feel like uh, most of us from the West, our 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 East Coast counterparts are all millionaires, man. Mm -hmm. And I I'm going to complain about that because it's one of the stupidest things that I've ever seen in my life. You know how, uh, you know the underground of LA has a handful of MCs who could be considered in the top, you know, fifty, uh, thirty MCs, oh, yeah. and they're not. They don't. Say that again. I'm just throwing out names. Hieroglyphic. I mean, yeah. Keep yeah, man. Uh, Saphir, man. Oh my God! You know what I'm saying? Um, Raz I, I mean, it's, we can we can list them. Right, all. right. None of us are rich from this shit, man. Can I curse? You can curse. You <laughs> can say curse. fuck shit, bitch. Pussy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't understand why we're not why why we're not paid. It's something spiritual to the fucking West Coast or something, mm -hmm. where they have just decided. To lock us out of the fucking money for the most part, man. And I just think it's a shame. It's a shame to the hip hop community because they know. You know, when I when I listen to my radio, I tell you that the dudes on the radio right now, they know who I am. They listen to my shit. They study volume ten. But I'm not working. How are we not reaping the, the benefits of of Hollywood. Why do you think that is, though? I mean, because there's so much nostalgia right now. Like, there's a lot of, you know, 90s acts, you know? I just had Mellow Man Ace on. I mean, I've had, a, you know, just a few cats that are still staying active, and, and they really only have one or two hits, you know what I mean? All I can say is that the West Coast artist is treated differently than any other artist hmm. on the fucking planet. And, I, and you know, it, it could be a deeper... I think it's a real deep reason it's it's deeper than i can really wrap my brain around mm -hmm. and if i could i probably would be in a better position than i am i was you know a big fan of the baker boys I, I i know you guys didn't really you know i guess you guys were bumping heads back back then while you were recording that song uh pistol grip pump 
Yeah. How did you hear about that? I'm just I do my homework, curious. homie. And and, I, and I, I'm a hip hop. <laughs> I'm the biggest hip hop nerd you're gonna you're, you're gonna run into. And I literally dig so deep. I, I've I've been asked that several times. How the fuck do you know that? But yeah, I heard you guys bump heads. Listen, I want to apologize to the Baker Boys. It's one of the uh, blunders of my career, and I've had many of blunders mm. to get to, <laughs> to, to to have to go back to the beginning, and they were definitely a blunder. And I want to give shots out to them for coming up with that with that track, man. I mean, they they basically helped. Uh, you know, stamp my career at that moment, you know what I mean? And put me in a position to make it happen. And, and uh, I appreciate them. I wish we had a work together throughout these years, but we didn't. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with me being immature, I guess, on the kind of ways that I, when I, how I handle things mm -hmm. then. And, uh, you know, what's unfortunate is that people don't seem to want to give me uh, uh, the benefit of the doubt now. <laughs> uh, I talk to people and they, you know, they expect me to be the same 19-year-old kid who had a record deal. And it's like, bro, nah, I've learned some things. And, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, 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 we bumped heads. We bumped heads. It was just different, different styles, like because you weren't really feeling the, the the whole concept, from what I understand, right? Or the whole song? Nah, or, man. That, nah, I mean, look, there was a few things they gave me the beat without the without the bass line in it. Okay. And I wasn't feeling it, so they made me the the label made me write a song to it basically <laughs> okay and uh they just highly suggested that i that i used it but if you can imagine i mean the the beat was all about the bass line really you know what i mean yeah. it was that fucking bass line mm -hmm. so without it it just didn't make sense mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah so once the bass line was put in it uh i totally got it you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, I think I pretty much wrote the song without the bass line in it. And, uh, you know, we, we, we got to the studio and we went to mix. Basically, they, they started mixing without me. You know, I I, uh, I like to put a lot of tracks, you know, when especially when I was young. Uh, when they said that it had 48 tracks, I tried to use the fucking 48 tracks for vocals you know what I mean like it's, I however many tracks they gave me I was using them you know what I mean mm -hmm. so I had a lot of extra shit in there and I and you know I told them not not to uh not to mix it until I got there and and uh they mixed all the stuff that I didn't want in there and uh they basically told me to go fuck myself mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know I said hey don't mix it and they said we already mixed it I said hey you know pull it back up because when I get there I'm, I know it's going to be some stuff I need to fix and uh hold on for a minute you know what I'm glad I looked at my phone Go ahead. I have five sec. I have five uh percent left bang <laughs> uh can you get my charger my phone's about to run out That's it. so yeah man they told me they weren't going to do it they weren't going to re you know, pull it up again. So I kind of kicked them out of the fucking studio and mixed it myself. And, uh, you know, the engineer acted like an asshole because he pulled their mix down. So it wasn't the same mix. And so, you know, I was like, Hey, you know, whatever. Mm. But then they called me back. Hold on for a minute. Go ahead, man. Take Plus your time. Up. Plus up. So yeah, I mixed the vocals how I wanted it, and uh, you know I think the proof is in the pudding, man. You know we we we've talked about it before, and I've and I've said you know what, bro, uh, I was right mm -hmm. <laughs> because it was a historic song, dog, yeah. and it, it was it would not have been that if it would have been left 
the way that they had it. Yeah. You know, and I and I think it was just some young stuff. It was some misunderstanding. I, you know, um, they they called me back and they apologized and they said, you know what, we shouldn't have mixed it. We apologize. We're gonna come back in and mix it, and they mixed it. And but shit just wasn't ever the same after that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I I can never get them to kind of fucking you know forgive me mm. for going off on them. You know, and uh, we, you know, it was a, a lot of there was a lot of good music that could have happened with those guys, and I'm 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 uh, you know I'm a little bit upset about it. Pistol grip pump on my lap at all time. Niggas fuck with other niggas, but they ain't fucking with mine. Was a, actually a Bum B line, right? It definitely was. Yeah, yeah. Look, listen, and I and I almost wanted to apologize to him, but I didn't do nothing wrong. So whoever wants, you know, go talk to Bum B. Let him know, you know, because I've I've said this before, you know, about the song, but you know, we uh, we sampled them saying it we sampled him saying it mm-hmm. and back then we didn't have pitch control so he sounded like a chipmunk once it was sped up to be on time with the with our track because mm-hmm. their track was real slow mm-hmm. um ours was faster and he sounded like a chipmunk mm-hmm. you know and i was like dog we can't use that mm-hmm. so i just did it man myself and to be honest man um you know, I had no idea about the technical aspects and the business aspects of, you know, using uh, the hook. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's it's a it's it's a blessing that I was able to use it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it it, it definitely was um, Bumby's Bumby yeah. line. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I, I, you know, just as being young and being um, headstrong, you know, there was just nothing else I could do. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, I couldn't I couldn't let the song go, you know what I'm saying? It was it was it was too uh you could say it was commercial, but it really wasn't, but it was you know, it was it was too much of a classic, sounded too much like a classic, man. I, yeah. You know what I mean? I appreciate Bum B for doing the line. It's one of the hardest lines on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um uh, and it made, so, it made yeah. one of the hardest songs on the planet. It Real did. It did. And that song that they that it was on, Pocket Full of Stones, is definitely right. one Pocket of my of favorite man. favorite songs on ever, man. I mean uh, I got a pocket full of stones, stones was played all in the name of my hood when I was growing up. R.I.P. <laughs> Pimp C <laughs> man. Yeah, R.I.P. the Pimp C man. There's a rumor, you know, in, in in L.A. back in the day, or you know, whatever, that Ice Cube visited the Good Life, saw you perform the song, and then kind of switched okay. his style up. Is that true? And does that is that does that fuck a gorilla line? Is that reference to Ice Cube? Okay, so that that you didn't I didn't expect you to say <laughs> that. <laughs> I did my uh, homework, man. Listen, I'm just gonna say that that. People have been influenced by me through the beginning of my career up until now. Even the little underground rap albums that I put out that did not get very much acclaim, they also have been studied by people. I will tell you that uh, the radio to this day Has your is they're 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 doing they're either doing yeah. my style or they're doing Mike and Nine style or they're so doing. Much, homie. They're doing a version of both of them. Please don't they're take this. The chop, please don't take this. They're doing the yet. chop and the swing. Exactly, and don't take this as a as a uh, compliment or as not as a diss because he I'm, I don't feel his style. Uh, but hey. uh, blue blue face hey. is, is he, he jumps hold off. On, hold on, go ahead, go hold ahead. On, hold on, do your thing. Do your thing. Hold 
Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's all good. But yeah, there are a lot of people. I'm not saying that you guys jumped off beat, but you kind of did jump off beat, but you always still on beat, and, and a lot of that style is is around to this day. And and I'm not a big fan of the blue faces of the world, but he he kind of has his own version yeah. of that. And then yeah, and Ellie Choppas, and like there's there's a bunch of you know people out there that do what you guys were doing 20 years ago, mainly you. I will say that that is that 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 fact uh that fact not being known across the board mm -hmm. uh, in the fan arenas because i will tell you that the artists they know right mm -hmm. definitely uh the fans not knowing that and that fact equaling paper to me and mike and for the crew in general mm -hmm. because we wasn't the only niggas that was being studied you know what i mean mm -hmm. the other homies in there is being studied too i mean all of us have put into that money pot and just not receiving very much from it and it's just a shame to me man you know i don't i don't really want to call out names bro because that's not my fucking job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I have a hard enough time standing up and saying this shit because a lot of, you know, a lot of people didn't want to hear that shit. You know, people don't want to hear, hey, your best, your favorite rapper has been influenced by some niggas that ain't got no paper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's what it's all about. It's like, it's, it's, it's like, like that's an american thing man if you didn't if you didn't get rich off the thing you get erased you know what i'm saying and you know you've seen that time and time again it's basically some racism shit you know what i mean you've seen um black men invent shit all the time that they didn't get credit for oh, or yeah. paid for yeah. And, you know, this music thing is no damn different. They started doing our songs, uh, doing what they call a cover. Elvis used to go, you know, to, go to little juke joints and steal uh, music from soul people and, and, and jazz musicians back then and shit. And then turn the that into... The point is, where, where do we get off uh, having that same attitude? You know what I mean? Where do we get off uh, perpetrating the same crimes that was put on us? That's one of the problems mm. yeah. that the uh, Good Life Project Blow has mm. is that we are we were very moral in a way. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, it was an incubator, is what B. Hall likes to call it, which was the lady who ran the, the Good Life. Mm -hmm. She called it the incubator, and that's pretty much what it was. It was a whole bunch of kids that were being mothered by hip hop and a lot of elders and shit. And, and, you know, we were taught um, better. And and I, and I think that we kind of got, got ate up by the machine. We wasn't really ready because we weren't, we weren't, um, we didn't have that, that edge to us, that killer edge because we were mothered to death. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we kind of got ate up, you know? Yeah, and that makes a lot of um, sense. Yeah, we didn't see it coming, bro. I'm gonna yeah. tell you that we didn't. We were we were real green, and I think that you know one thing that is different from East Coast and West Coast is that the West Coast seemed to have had uh, direction from older hip hop guys. A lot of the, every time you know some new crop of people came in on the East Coast. It seemed like they got taught the game from so the people that preceded them, and um, I don't think we got that. I think we didn't learn how to master the game. That's part of it. You know, we didn't learn how to navigate through the bullshit to be able to be very successful in it. And I mean, there's a lot of reasons behind that. 
you know, at the end of the day, I guess you could say that you're responsible for your own success. But I will tell you that there is some type of cloak over the underground hip hop of Los Angeles that is keeping us out of our position and uh, our position in hip hop. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's shameful. I see a lot of people that have been influenced keeping it quiet and not pulling us up. Even, even when I hear people admit it, mm -hmm. I don't see any activity, uh, to try to stop with, it. Huh? No, go ahead. I'm go ahead. I don't see anyone uh, pulling anyone up. That's like what I'm saying, it's yeah. obvious. It's obvious that Mike, you know, it has been has been influencing motherfuckers since he was 16 or 15 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a shame that. Uh, uh, some of these million dollar people that are obviously ripping our styles have not tapped us on the shoulder and put us to fucking work, man. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you, I seen uh, I seen Rick Ross <laughs> pulled up uh, uh, Spice One, okay, and that and and some new cut that they got out. Um, I forgot the name of it, but it touched my heart. I was very happy because obviously Spice One has put a stamp on the game, right? Yeah. And and he has a lot of 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 the generation that's on the radio have looked, you know, at him and and, and been influenced by him. I'm sure. And for Rick to pull him up like that. Just That's is That's was a beautiful love. thing, man. Right? Yeah. It's something that they all should do. And I'm gonna tell you, it's a stain on the game, man. I'm sorry, it's it's a stain on the game, and all those that have been involved in it should be ashamed of themselves.